Hey everybody, today on Rada we're running through Nunatak, the Temple of Ice. But before I begin, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that if I make any rules gooks, you know what they are. And of course, I'm not Rado, I'm Shea Parker, helping Rado cover even more games, games like Nunatak. I, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Anyway, a Nunatak is a, or Nunatak, Nuna, whatever it is, uh, it is a mound of ice, kind of looks like a pyramid. It is a natural formation, but in this game, we're saying that it isn't. In fact, this is a temple that has been produced by a prehistoric civilization, and we're playing as that prehistoric civilization. This is a kind of tile place or I should say uh, tower placement game where we are going to be using these cards and this temple, uh, this sheet of ice in front of us with a bunch of different types of locations that require different types of things to build upon. Um, and as we go, we're actually going to be building up higher and higher because these will support more tiles. So it's a pretty straightforward game once you start. Um, so I'm gonna jump right in on the left brain. Uh, we've got just uh, a set of cards and we just have to pick one of these. So uh, we're gonna pick one and then we're going to place one of our cubes on the corresponding tile. Now, there is one slight caveat because I'm playing a two player game, uh, you'll see that each of our sides, we have all these green towers as well. Now that's just another player color, but it represents a sort of third player that is uh, building alongside us. And what that means is every time we build, we are going uh, in a row of three cubes. So we're choosing whether we're going to use one of our towers or one of the third player towers. Third player is not gonna score, but uh, they are still needed to finish uh, the tower because there just aren't enough pieces to do it without it. And also it creates some interesting decisions. So at the start, we're looking at our options and I see there's a couple sculptors out. Now sculptors um, are uh, going to be a pretty common symbol that we're gonna see on the board. Uh, there are several sculptor sections here, here, there, and there. Um, and we're gonna see them a lot more as we go on. And what these are good for is, well, what all of these uh, cards are good for are set collections, because at the end of the game, this is gonna be scoring through set collection. There's all kinds of different ways to score uh, using the different types of uh, symbols that you're gonna see. So with sculptors, this is one of those, the more you get, the more they're worth kind of goals. Um, and uh, the artisan ones are similar, they like sets. Uh, the Beast of Burdens are multiplying the number of symbols by the number of cards, because Beast of Burdens will have multiple symbols on them sometimes, like that. Then there's the architects. These are multiplying the number of cards you have by your space on the architect track, which each uh, side of the board has one for each player. And uh, then there's uh, elders and builders, and we'll talk about those a little bit later because they work a little bit differently. So I'm just looking at uh, what I wanna grab. I think I'm gonna grab a sculptor. I think if I'm gonna go for sculptors, good to start early. And so I take this, and then I'm gonna place one of my tower pieces and uh, I get to place it on any sculptor section. So I can't place it on any other type of uh, you know, location. So I have to match the card that I grabbed. And I like to put things on the edges. There's a, a scoring bonus for having the most sort of edge tower pieces. So I can go here. I could also go up in the top somewhere. Uh, let's just start in the corner here. That's a nice, nice good place to be. And then uh, once I'm done with that, we refill and that's my whole turn. So going over to the right brain, okay, he grabbed a sculptor. Now, a thing that I could do if I want to be mean, there's some opportunity to be, be a little bit spiteful, is I could grab the next sculptor one. Again, we're, we saw that sculptors, you want to have as many of them as possible, so grabbing one off of him uh, means that we're tied. Or a thing that I could do is I could use one of the third player tower pieces. And they're basically saying, like, I don't care about sculptors, but uh, I don't want you to have them. So I'm just gonna use third player one and that makes makes it so that I have my own uh, available for the next two. But I sculptors, you know, he only has one. He doesn't have a commanding lead on this. I don't want him to be to get the second one. So I'm just gonna grab that one first and I'm gonna go up here. Let's grab that sculptor one for myself. And then we reveal, now we've got a beast of burden. All right, I like the 
again, there's a couple Beasts of Burdens out. I definitely would rather get this twofer. Um, so I'll grab that one. And I'm again choosing Beast of Burden space. Now he's put uh, one of his blocks up here. I think I want to be up there as well because there is in this game a, I don't know what to call it. I wouldn't say area control, area majority maybe. Uh, whenever we finish squares of towers because that immediately puts out a new tile and we're gonna get a little bit of score for that. So I wanna be in the running over there. And we replace. Uh, all right, so we've got an artisan. Artisans are similar to sculptors. You want a lot of them, but the, each of them has their own tool. So this one's a pickaxe. There are three tools, pickaxe, ropes, and it's like a spear saw kind of thing. It looks like a halberd, I don't know. Um, bone saw, it's not a bone saw. Uh, I don't remember exactly what it is, but it'll come up and we'll find out. So pickaxe is good. It's good to have a set of these. I might start want to start working on them early. Um, the other thing I'm looking at though is this elder. Uh, the elder gives us the use of these two cards, uh, or one of these two cards that are available here. These are sort of special ability cards. They can work in a bunch of different ways. The ones that we have currently are a blessing of change. This counts, once you grab this, this would count as a wild artisan. It has, it'll have one of the three tools and you'll decide which one at the end of the game. Um, and so if I grab it, I'll immediately place that into my, uh, my tableau. The other one, Blessing of Foresight, allows you to uh, reserve a card. And I think that's pretty cool. So maybe having one of those would be good. I do like the idea of the Blessing of Foresight. I don't think it's super useful right now, but it definitely could be. Because right now, I'm still kind of figuring out what we're going for. But that could be useful in the future. So I think I'm gonna grab that. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna take the Elder card. And uh, so unlike sculptors, architects, beasts of burden, artisans, the Elder card gives you the ability when you grab it. Um, of course, I do need to use my own color for this. Um, and where is an Elder? Elder, uh, there's one here, one here, one here. I think I'll go, well, this is the other thing though. This isn't really helping me in terms of thing, these things. And if I leave the beast of burden, that means that left brain can grab this space, which means they will have most of that. Actually, but that's not, I'm not worried about that, and I'll, I'll show you why a little later. Oh, actually, oh, because of this, mm. Okay, so I was thinking in a three-player mindset, but with a two-player mindset, it is actually different. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna hold off on the Elder. I am going to grab the Beast of Burden, because I know that the next uh, piece he places has to be one of the um, uh, one of the third player pieces. So I'm grabbing the beast of burden again. My <laughs> strategy right now has been spite, uh, which is a way that you can play. This is not a way you have to play it, but I'm going to place it up on this space up here. Reveal a new card. Pass it over to left brain. Got another pickaxe out here, and now I. Whatever I pick, I have to use a third player tile. So if I were to place here, that would finish the square and then we would score. The, whoever has the most gets five points, which in this case would be right break. So they'd get five points. And then we would be tied, but because I'm technically placing this as the third player, um, the, whoever is placing gets priority. So they would get two points, they don't score any points, basically just means I don't get anything. So I don't wanna place anything right there. I could place somewhere else. So I definitely could do that. But also whatever card I grab, I don't get to add to my tableau, that's just gone. I think I'm gonna grab one of these artisans though, and I'm just gonna place it here. It's not really helping me, not hurting me, and this is just gone. Because now right brain actually has to do the same thing. And I don't love that. Oh, but I could grab an artisan card and place it here because for the same reason that uh, left brain didn't, it actually works out well for me. So I am going to do that. I'm going to grab this artisan card, going to chuck it. I need to stop grabbing whatever left brain grabs. Uh, 
on on right brain's turn because that's been my goal every single round so far anyway so i'm going to place that right there this is finishing a square and when you finish a square um, that's going to score like i mentioned i have the majority so i'm going to get five points they're tied but uh, green was the one who just placed, so they have priority on the tie, which means they would get two points if they were tracking points, but they're not. So it's just me getting five points. And that feels like a pretty good move for me. We reveal, it's a bunch of architects. Now, we haven't grabbed architects. Architects can feel a little bit risky to grab early on because while they are, or while they can be very valuable, you kind of telegraph it when you're going for architects. See. Uh, the score is the number of architect, architect cards you have multiplied by this, uh, your placement on the architect track. And this track goes forward every time you finish a column or a row, every time you are the one to finish one of those. So if it looks like you're really going for that, then it's, easy, it's easier for the opponent to block you in two different ways. So I don't know if I want to go for that. Maybe I go for the Elder instead. And the other option is I could uh, put out, yeah, you know what? Maybe I'm just going to go for an Architect and I'm going to use, uh, again, I'm going to use a Green Tower because I don't really um, mind that they're going to grab that. And I want to make sure I have uh, options for my next two. Now here, we've got two elders out. I do think I want to grab an elder right now. So, which elder do I like? So elders, not only do they give you uh, the elder cards, but they also have a, a little symbol on the top right here. Basically, for every elder card you're going to, that you get, you're going to get points for each card matching uh, the symbols on the top right. So for every sculptor and architect card, if I grab this one, I'll get a point. If I grab this one, it's every elder card and every uh, artisan. Um, I mean, I have a sculptor card, so I could go for that. I think I'll grab, yeah, I'll grab this elder card, grab that right there. And now I get to grab one of these, uh, although that's after I place. So I'm going to place three options here, here, and here. Definitely like being on the outside. I'm gonna go there. Oh, you know, a thing I forgot to do, and which is very important, after we score for this section here, we need to place a new tile. So we got a builder tile. We actually haven't seen any builder cards yet, uh, but there should be a few of them in here. Uh, these are tiered, so you get all the level one cards before the level twos, but you can place level one, you know, you, you can use a level one card to place on a level two tower. So that's not a big deal. But anyway, we've placed, and now I need to decide which one I'm going to grab. I did, I think I'm going to grab Blessing of Foresight. This is going to give me the opportunity to um, reserve a tile. So, so my eyes box on any building card in the display and reserve it for you. If possible, I mu if possible, I must take it on my next turn. So I think that's good if there, you know, if there's two cards that I really want. So I'm just going to put that in the little corner there. And then we refill. There's a builder card. Oops, not next, uh, here. Now next we have Blessing of Transference. At the end scoring, I may move one of my cards to any other type of card. Interesting. So I can just turn one of my cards into a different kind of card. That could be really useful for both the Beast of Burden and Sculptors. So I think I want to grab that while it's available. I'm going to grab the, the other, oh, whoops, should have been on left brain. Um, I'm going to grab the other Elder just to make sure I can get that because I think that's a really useful card. So, second Elder card acquired and I can have it for myself. Uh, two options here. I think I'm going to go down here. Again, I like things being on the outer edge. There's some points in the game for that. I also want to make sure that I'm set up to finish some squares with my own uh, cubes. And so I'm going to grab the Blessing of Transference, have that. All right, so we got a couple builder cards out, and they have a different ability as well. Uh, the next Blessing card, Blessing of Providence. When a row is complete, you receive seven points. If you have more ice blocks in that row than any other person, if there's a tie, you get four. That 
could be really useful, especially if you're going for architect, it means that you're kind of on the lookout for that. But that's just a good way to get points, shoot. That's something to keep in mind. All right, so I'm looking out for, let's see, what else am I gonna do? I see, hmm. Builder might be interesting. Because I can move things around with a builder. I can sort of put a build. So the way that a builder works, there are these purple tiles in a lot of different places. But before I place onto a builder tile, I can actually pick it up and swap it with another free space. So if I, you know, wanted to place a builder, but I really wanted to place it here, if I took a builder thing, I, I would be able to swap them before doing that. I don't know that I actually want to do that. And I, there is value in uh, taking that space, though I don't necessarily need to right now. I could maybe even set something up to make it worse for my opponent. Yeah, I kind of like that. Okay, I'm going to grab a builder, but I'm going to do it with a third player tower. So this is gonna go, but I wanna place this here. So I'm gonna take a, uh, I have to figure out which of these I want to take, or I could take this one up top, which might be useful if I wanna put something else up there. So yeah, I'm gonna grab this one up here, swapping out this artisan tile, putting the artisan tile up here, because I might get that in the future, and that will help me out, because whenever you place on a tile that's higher than the first level, you will get a point for each supporting tower you have. So I've placed that there. And, ah, shoot, I should have been on right brain this whole time. My bad. Um, so that was right brain doing that. Left brain gets to go. And now the question is, what do I want? I do see a sculptor here. I don't want right brain to get sculptors, especially because they got that elder uh, tool now. So I'm going to grab the sculptor. And you know what? I see a great spot to finish off. Yes, they put that here, and that could have been a problem, um, but they were too impulsive. They didn't think about it, because I can finish that here and get some points out of it. And Bright Brain won't get anything. So I'm going to get five points. We're going to place another tile up, architect tile. And we put another card out. Ooh, big beast of burden. So Right Brain here. I see the Beast of Burden. I definitely don't want Left Brain to get that. Uh, I probably should just grab it. But the question is, is there anything I want more? I also kind of wanted to place the, the Artisan up there. I definitely want the Beast of Burden. I, the question is, should I use my Blessing of Foresight to uh, lock down one of these? I don't think I need to just yet. It's not so important that I get it. So I'm going to um, place that. I will go maybe here. Because yeah, he could, left brain could place here, but I'll still get five points for that. So I feel okay placing there. Mm, he could also place here and then I would, uh, he would get five points. Sometimes, like, you want to be the one to complete squares, so it's uh, a bit tricky in that way. Maybe I place here. Kind of guarantees that I'll be in the running in this spot, and it doesn't allow him to get anything right now. Yeah, I think that's that's the way to go. All right. Left brain. Hmm. There are some, some tools out here I might want to grab. Because I don't have any, any tools. I'm not going for any tools just yet. I could probably make something like that work. The other option, this isn't great for me, but there's an interesting uh, situation here. So I could grab an architect and I place that here. That's going to get me one architect, architect card. It'll finish off a row. And so that'll get me an architect point. Now, this would, becomes a very valuable space. However, there are no Beast of Burden cards out, so he can't get it right away. And, you know, maybe that'll come up in the next card, but maybe it won't. 
and if, if I can get it, and then it'll kind of become a top deck kind of situation, whichever, whenever it comes up, whoever uh, gets it will get it. And that's kind of just a, a interesting little risk. So I'm okay with that. I'm gonna grab this architect. We'll hold on to that place right here. That will bounce that up and we reveal the card. And I, I hope that it's not a beast of burden, but of course it is. Ah, uh, so that was the risk that I took and I did not do super well with it because right brain now, yeah, this is, this is the card I gotta take uh, for a, a couple of reasons. One, I'm building up a nice collection of Beast of Burden. So that's good. Two, I'm gonna place that right there. We're just gonna finish off a column and two squares. So for the column, I get an architecture point. And then for this first square, I'm only gonna get two points and I will give left brain five. But on this right one, I'm gonna get five and they'll get two. So we kind of stay tied there. But if left brain had been able to place it, it would have been much better for them. So that is what that is. That's my turn, left brain. All right, yeah, that could have gone better for sure. But hey, Here's another good architect space. Because they did that, now there's this other architect card. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna place right here another edge spot. I finished a row and I finished a square. And uh, yeah, that's that I think is a good cascade. That works out okay for me. So that is getting placed, which means I get five points. Right brain gets nothing because they don't have anything there. Um, and I got my architecture points. Okay, there's a lot of artisan cards. I should probably start picking them up. And I can go here. Yep, I'm gonna go dead center. Grab one of the pole saws. Actually, no, I'm gonna grab the pickaxe because there's two pole saws left. So I'll probably be able to uh, capitalize on that. Just trying to make space. Let's go. It's fine, it's fine, everything's fine. So. I place there, I'm gonna get five points. Left brain gets nothing. We're keeping pretty close on that on that game. So it might, might really end up being whoever has the better tableau by the end of it. Um, all right, so both of us are in the position where we only have the third player pieces left. So all I can really do is block my opponent with things. And I think I have an idea of where to do that. I'm gonna grab a builder card. The way the builders score, I forgot to mention, is that whoever has the most of them just gets 20 points. Um, everyone else will get two points per builder card. So they are valuable, especially if no one else is getting them. And currently neither of us have any. On top of that, if you have one of every card, you get an extra 10 points per set. So I, I have four different colors. I probably might, I might want that. But again, I can't grab it. So I'm gonna take this builder card, I'm gonna throw it away. And I'm looking for the best spot for orange, which is right here. That's, they have one, two, three supporting blocks. Uh, that's, you know, awful. I don't want them to have that. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna move a builder. Let's see, if I grab this one, it will give them two points but it'll stop them from getting five. So maybe that's worth it. I think so. Swapping this tile. I'm gonna go there. Oh, that's if they place there anyway, so. And now we placed here. The reason I did this is because if orange places there, they get points for that, for the supporting tiles. But now, no one gets any points. The two player game is a little bit more spiteful than the three player game because the three player game or four, you are really only looking for what is good for you and then secondary concern is what's bad for the opponent. With this one, you have these uh, kind of sp <laughs> the spite blocks that are, are just really good for that. So now I have to do the same thing, I'm grabbing it. Well, they have sculptors. Um, they did just mess me up. I, I would love to get the sculptor, but they're gonna have first uh, divs on it. So I'm just going to grab this and, and uh, toss it. I put my third player cube. Let's see. I could go here, which would get me some points, but I'd rather 
I'd rather my opponent force, uh, I'd rather force my opponent to give me points if they're gonna. So I'm gonna go up there in the top. Do I want to foresight anything? Is there anything that I really want? Oh, I guess I could have just, I could have put the foresight on the sculptor, though I, I'd have just seen what's coming up next. So shouldn't do that really. But that would have been a good way to, a really good use of the foresight. Um, just to put one of my blocks on it. Anyway, back to the left brain. I see a few things. There's plenty of uh, artisan stuff. There's an elder. Do I want any of these guys? I think that blessing of providence would be good. I do. I do like the idea of getting points for completing rows. Um, if I have more blocks in that row than any other person, I think I want this. So I'm gonna grab the elder. It's another elder, and it's gonna give me a little variety. So I'm gonna get points for a lot of other things. Um, and I'm gonna grab the Blessing of Providence to go along with it. Oh, this is a one-time use thing. This isn't every time I do this. Huh, great, lovely green. Um, because it's a one-time use, only gonna to get to use it once, and then it's gone, which is which makes sense. That would be um, very powerful if it was just an ongoing thing. However, if I don't use it, that's still worth two points. So I think it's good either way. Now I need to place a block and I'm gonna place a block up here because I've got three supports. So by placing anything on this space, I get point for each. That's three points. Go up here. All right, right brain got another beast of burden. If there's a spot available there, yeah, there are a couple spaces available. Hmm. Now the question is, which of these spaces do I want to put it on? I can get a point if I place it here, because I have a support block. If I place it down here, I have it uh, a block on the side. This is a, a side space too, because it's not just counting the lowest row. But it gives Right Brain the opportunity to close off that square if an Elder card comes up, which we don't know if it will. It's kind of a kind of a gamble that I don't really want to give that to them though. So I'm just going to place the Beast of Burden. I'm definitely gonna grab the Beast of Burden, but I'm just gonna place it up here and I'll get one point for that. And over to left, a builder. We got a few builders out. Is there anywhere where I want to place builders? Maybe, maybe over here. Because I want to, you know, guarantee that I'm going to win this square. And if I have three here, then if I finish this column, I can uh, cash in my blessing of providence. So yeah, I'm going to grab a builder. Or do I want to? No, I'm going to grab it for myself. Building. I'm going to grab the builder card. Running it. Oh, I don't have enough space for my my tableau. Let's place it up here. Um, and like I said, I'm going to take. Oh, no, they like Beast of Burden, so I'm not going to put it close to their own bricks. I'm going to go like that. Because the Builder card lets you move the tiles around. All right. I think that puts me in a decent position over there. Right brain. I could grab a Sculptor, or again, I could be spiteful with the Sculptors. But if I grab it, I'm going to get points for the square. So I, I kind of like that. The other option is I could start working on the artisans. I, I haven't gotten any of them. I mean, it would be useful to get. <laughs> hmm. It is a toughie. But I don't want them to have the sculptors. So I think I'm gonna grab it. Do I want it for myself? Do I want it for myself? Because what if something better comes along? Next turn. Well, if something better comes along when I flip, I can Blessing of Foresight, it, I guess. Would I have to use the green block for that, though? I think I would, if that's the only thing I have. I don't know exactly how that works in a two-player game. Oh, you know what? I was dumb. I made a mistake. This is going to be an, a, a, a caption that Paula will have put on uh, early in the video. This is only usable in a three-player game, or a three- or four-player game. I shouldn't have this. 
But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna toss it and give, my, give myself a random one. Oh, there should be another one up here anyway. So I shouldn't have that at all. Instead, I have the Blessing of Inspiration. Immediately advance my uh, marker three spaces on the architect track. Okay, well, uh, I got that because I made a mistake. This is what I'm stuck with, so one, two, three. Guess I gotta start going for architect cards. We don't have any of those out right now. Um, but that's what that is. Oh yeah, and the other one that's out here is the Blessing of Stability. At the end, scoring, you receive two points for each of your ice blocks on the corner plates of the temple. Maximum 14, so corners. That would be good for left brain at the moment. Not for me. Uh, did I place? I don't think I actually placed. No, because I was grabbing that sculptor. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna grab the sculptor here. And I <laughs> felt bad for making that mistake, so I'm gonna make myself feel good by finishing a square, giving me five points. And we place another tile. A lot of artisans. We really should start working on those. All right, so an architect card just came up, and because they have that boost on the architect track, I think that's a perfect thing to block uh, right brain from getting. So I'm gonna grab this with my third player uh, tower and just take the spot. Like a jerk. That's how I did it. Yeah, now I think is a perfect time. Well, actually it would be a perfect time to go for these. Uh, if I didn't have to use a third player block now, might still be worth it. You know what? I'm going to grab a builder and I'm not even going to move it. I'm just going to place it right there because that will finish a square and it's going to get, uh, get me, uh, it's going to get me five points. Did I just, did I move orange in the last? I think I moved orange. Well. Yeah, I think I moved orange in the la when I just scored uh, a second ago for left brain when I should have done blue. Uh, I don't remember, so that might have changed the scores. We shall see. Uh, you gotta, I mean, you, you'll know, but there will definitely be a Apollo note if, if and I was wrong. So, left brain up. All right, finally, I can get another sculptor, except I can't because there's no sculptor squares on the board. Now that puts me in an interesting position because if there's a sculptor square on the board, right brain's just gonna take it. Um, or if one shows up at the end of my turn, right brain will take this. Probably, maybe, actually, I don't know. Um, but that's, that's sort of my thought process right now. Which means I don't want to finish any squares right now. And the best way to not finish a square uh, is gonna be to take one of these artisans. That's, also gonna be going towards uh, my set collection. So I'm gonna grab the Artisan Rope. Um, and that actually does finish a set for me. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have all six colors. So that's gonna be 10 points for me, like that. I'm gonna grab the Artisan Rope, which means I need to place Artisan Tile. Ooh, I could place right here. Cause again, this is a spot that Orange is going to want to put a, a cube down onto. Or I could go here. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go up here, block them on those points. An elder comes up. There is one more elder space. Hmm, do I want the elder space though? Cause that's just gonna get left brain some points. I don't really wanna give them points. Um, I think I'm gonna take a builder. Where am I gonna put it? Ooh, this is a great spot for me. Yeah, even I don't even need to move the builder. I think that's a good spot for me just regardless. So I'm grabbing the builder. I'm gonna just place it right there. So many reasons it's good for me. One, finishes row. Oh. Um, two, it finishes two squares and I'm gonna get first place on both of them. So that's 10 points. And we'll see what comes up. Got an elder space and a sculptor. So for me, if I'm going for sculptors, which I mean, we're pretty split on those. I, it's getting to the point where I don't know how important it is, honestly, but I think it's still worth it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab that sculptor, I'm gonna place. Again, I'm forced to 
place uh, my opponent's piece next, but I still think it's okay. Now, what do I want to do? I don't want to finish any squares, really. It's like I could finish this one with the Elder. I would get five points for that, but my opponent would get... I would get seven, actually, because I'd have the majority on this one, and they'd have the majority on that, but I'd have secondary, so I'd, we'd both get seven. That's kind of a moot. But if they place it, they're going to get ten, and I'll get two. So it's better for me to place it for myself than to let left brain place it. So I think I'm going to grab the Elder card. Just because I want to place here. That's going to go there. We're both going to get seven points for that. Five for me on this one, two for me on this one, five for blue on this one, two for them on... Actually, no, one for them, because they're tied with green, and neither of them are placing, so they split the points. So I come out better from that uh, to the tune of one point. But I'm doing better on the placement game than, than Left Brain is, I think. Oh, and I finish a, a row as well. I now desperately need Architect cards. Left Brain has two. They don't even have Architect track stuff. Um, so, oh, yeah, I need to grab a, uh, an Elder card. I don't actually know the timing of this. Which one comes first? I think you place the tiles first. Um, and then grab the... Uh, the Elder card, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So we shall see if there's a note right now. So it's come up, and I want to grab, I guess, the Blessing of Change. Um, so this becomes an Artisan card, and at the end uh, scoring, I will choose the type of it. So that's you know one more towards Artisans. I can um, better chance of getting the sets. We've both kind of been ignoring them, which has led to there being almost nothing but artisan cards right now. Uh, but I'm not going to do well with the Blessing of Stability at, at the moment. It's currently giving me two points. And I don't see myself getting a lot more than that. Though if Left Brain gets it, that's two, four, six. So maybe I get it just so that they don't. Yeah, in a two-player game, this, it, it can be pretty mercenary. I mean, it, it's it's very... It, it's kind of zero sum, so you gotta... Anything that hurts your opponent helps you. So yeah, I guess I'll go grab the Blessing of Stability. It does get me two, stops them from getting six, or potentially more. And I could get more if I really try for it. So, Blessing of Stability, it's in my pocket. And go to left brain. All right, I guess we gotta start working on uh, this whole area. So I'm going to uh, take the Artisan... This is getting, it's, it's, it's you. oh, that's right, it's not me. I'm not getting it. In that case, I'm gonna grab the pole saw because it's just a lot of them. So where do I put this? Could go here, but that's a bad idea. That blocks me off from getting a bunch of points. If I go here, that's gonna give orange five, seven points. I don't want that, but if they place, then they're gonna get, well, they're not gonna place next turn. You know what? I'm going to place here. I don't love it, but it doesn't hurt me. I think that's fine. That comes up. And now right brain goes. We, uh, I mean, we can grab any of these, but we are grabbing for the third player. So probably the artisan. Because apparently we've decided that we don't want the artisans in this, in this run. Um, Though I have gotten an artisan, so I, I should try to get some of these. I think I want to get rid of the builder because I don't want left brain to have uh, a builder. Because I want them to get the majority of builders. So I'm going to get rid of the builder. But where am I going to place it? I could place here, just where it is. I could place up here. I think that's actually pretty good for me. It's definitely not good for left brain. So... I'm going to move this up here. Unfortunately, I don't think I will get the architect points for this, for actually completing a row and a column. Um, but I don't want left brain to get that, and he definitely could next turn. So I do this. This is going to finish three squares. I'm going to get two points for this one, 
I'll get five points for this one, and I'll get one point for this one for a total of eight. Left brain is only getting one point for this, so I am smoking left brain on the placement game. And, ooh, now we've seen our first of our double tiles. Some of these tiles have two different things on them. Oh, you know what? I forgot to ever put a tile up here, too. So yeah, some of these have multiple options on them. So you can see that uh, any of these symbols will do. If I uh, place an artisan or a sculptor, it'll go. I can place it there. Um, so that's that. And left brain sees this three-point beast of burden. And there is that beast of burden space, which will do a number of things for me. Gotta grab it, at the very least, to make sure right brain doesn't get it, because they are doing well with beast of burden. Um, so I grab that. And now, so to give you an idea of how that would score if it stopped right now, I have five symbols and two cards. You multiply them together. So five times two would be 10 points. Right brain has five symbols, but they have four cards. So that's 20 points. But if they had gotten this card, that would be eight times five, which would be 40. That would have doubled the value of this. So it was very important that I grab this. And then, of course, I'm going to place a tile up here. Now, that finishes the square, gets me two points. Um, but I've finished a row and a column, so I bump up twice on the architecture track, which is good, because I do have a couple of architect cards. We reveal a new thing up here, a new card over here, and I am playing my Blessing of Providence, because I have completed a row with more blocks than anybody else. So I'm going to cash that in for seven points. Looking up to 41. So at this point, I think you're getting a pretty solid idea of the game. The only thing that we haven't seen are that some of these cards have double sides as well. And so when you grab one of these, you choose which one it's going to be, and then you slot it into your board like that. Uh, so the way that we would be continuing, I think left brain, if they can go for sculptors a little bit more, try to deny beasts of burden to the right brain, they're going to do essentially the same thing to the left, going for beasts, denying sculptors. The elders are interesting if they can get some good cards up. Um, there's two, ooh, the new one that came up also helps with artisans. So maybe there would be time for a late game switch into artisans, trying to uh, actually capitalize on that. Because this card increases the value of the sets and uh, the runs. Because artisans, for each type of thing you have, uh, so if I had like three ropes, I would get 10 points. When normally I think I would get five. Um, so both of these blessings together could be really good if you're able to get both of them. That might be tricky, though. Uh, left brain would probably, well, they both need to start going for architects. Right brain currently benefiting from it more, but left brain actually having the head start on the cards themselves. So that would be uh, another point of contention as well. And then you just keep going until you get to the uh, top piece, the fourth tile, which just has, you know, uh, a, a two by two grid. Um, and then whoever places the last, whoever uh, completes the last square has the majority on that gets to place the topper on top of the pyramid and it creates this wonderful full size, full size pyramid. No, small, definitely not full size, but a wonderful little pyramid on your table. So, and then every, of course, everyone just sort of scores. Uh, like I've said, we each of the card sets will score in different ways. Builder gets 20 points for having the most, sculptors, Artisans, you get points for having a lot of the same things. Artisan, you also get points for sets. Beasts of Burden, symbols times cards. Architect is cards times architecture track. And the Elders give you points for each matching card that you have. Uh, each matching card to the symbols on the top right here. And uh, two points for every unused Elder card as well. Uh, Ten points per set. And, oh yeah, uh, seven points for whoever has the most uh, blocks on the outside. Currently, that is left brain. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different ways to score, and it's a very high scoring game by the end of it. Uh, but of course, there is also the, the ground game as well, which, which is currently winning, but it is close. So that, I think, is giving you a pretty good idea of how the game is played. If you want to hear my final thoughts on it, why don't you click on that link in the top right corner or in the show notes below, and I will see you folks there in three, two, one. Bye-bye.